Hello there, and welcome once again to my little arty corner on YouTube. Uh, thank you for joining me again. If you're a returning visitor, I'm so appreciative of you. If you're new here, I do hope that you enjoy what you see. Today's video is going to be a look at a tangle pattern that is new to me. So I'm going to go through how to draw it step by step. I think I've worked out an alternative way to draw it or something similar. Um, which in my brain works a bit easier than the step out, but we'll come to that. So if these are the kinds of things you enjoy, um, I like to explore tangle patterns and tangle fragments and other motifs, very stylized art, which is my kind of style in many ways, then you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. I have a huge number of videos already in um you know sort of that are there on various things um as i you know start to find i've been you know i'll come back to those that now but you might want to subscribe and of course i always always welcome people to like my videos to let me know that i'm on the right track i suppose that i'm producing content that is valuable to you okay um, drawing is always valuable to me spending time drawing exploring gaining confidence with things is important and I'm learning that or well, I've known that but I'm really appreciating that process far more by doing this so I was going to say something yeah about it's taken me a while to find out what kind of voice or content I want to produce for YouTube I suppose and there'll still be odd things that are a bit different because that's me my art doesn't stay static it's I, I have my style, I have my voice, I have my way of doing things, but things do change. Um, so you might see lettering videos appearing every now and again, because I am focusing a lot on developing my lettering skills and looking at expanding things in that way. Things are ticking through my head. I gave a quick view of my lettering pages. At, um, I'm not sure if it was yesterday or the day before, but either the last video or the video before, I can't remember. So today's tangle pattern is brand new to me. I've not seen this before. I've not come across it before, but it's called Ceros and it's by Simone Menzel, who is a CZT. And it's got, the, I know she got the um, inspiration from um, some roses or very stylized roses or flowers carved into stone. So it's something near and dear to my heart if you know if you've been following me long enough you know i love a bit of architectural details and i do enjoy things like that and i do like things that are very stylized um it's quite a oh, let me move my drink to the other side of me because i'm still drinking my morning coffee which has some chai spice in it as in spices a spice mix as in dry powdered spice um and it's actually quite pleasant Who'd have thought it? That's, um, I'm enjoying that because it's, yeah, zingy. So let's have a look at this. I've got, I've actually got the step out in front of me because it's that new that I haven't worked out or sort of crystallized it all in my head. And um, where did I find this tangle pattern? Ooh, tanglepatterns.com, of course. Fantastic resource. So let me just check. Yeah, we're all okay here. So, if you have a look here, I actually mistangled, as the phrase is, the first one here, because the step out actually has um, a five-sided figure, a pentagon in the middle, and I managed to draw a square, because that's what I do. And down here, I totally mistangled. This one's a complete mistangle, but it's interesting in its own way, and it's something I may develop because it's something a little bit on the different side. So I'll start with a square because, hmm, should I start with a square? I'll start with a pentagon. So I am going to draw a pentagon here, and I am using a nice chunky pen. It's one of the Pentel, yeah, is it Pentel? Yeah, Pentel Touch brush pens. So you start with this, and then the first job is you need to extend these lines around the shape. So I am moving anti-clockwise around and make them roughly 
equal length, like that. Okay? That's the very first step. The next one, you've got to imagine there's a circle around the outside of these. Now, if you're unsure about doing that, by all means, pencil it in. But you need to leave a fair gap between this line and this line. So we're going to draw an arc here. The same here, and a gap needs to be left. And again, leaving a gap leaving a gap and leaving a gap. So we end up with this kind of crazy spiraling kind of shape, which is fun. It looks fun on its own. I'm sure there are lots of other things we can do, but this is where this pattern really begins because the next step is to draw a little like semicircle or perhaps one that's more like half a teardrop and a line down here that you need to leave a gap okay and you do this around all of them on mine i didn't i've left similar gaps along the side instead of angling it in so i'm refining the process now with you So I'm going to draw this one to come up there. And I'm going to draw this one and have it there. So we've now gone to this. And then the next step is to draw from this over to the point here. I'm going to start at the bottom like that. So I'm going to carry on from this teardrop shape around and get it to meet at this point here. We'll start at the point and have it following it around. So we end up with this. It already looks like a very stylized flower. Next step is to fill these in with black so it looks like these are curling over them. I'd be tempted to actually, when you draw these lines in, I'll do this in the next variation, is to actually perhaps have them going over so they meet here. So we've got a bit of, no, that won't work. This one, so they come down, we've got a bit of an overlap. But I'll do that in the next variation. So a bit of rounding of corners won't go amiss here, I think. Awkward for me to do with this pen. This pen has been much used in just a couple of days and it's lost its very fine point but it'll work. Sometimes chunky is good. It makes it very clear and easy for you to see because I have to draw really quite big and bold. Okay, and then the next step, which is almost this finished, is to draw semicircles in the middle of the lines of that original pentagon. So like petals going inwards and then we can or of these as well. Oh, I lied. I've still got a very fine edge. Just needs a lighter hand than I was using. And in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop an orb in the middle using Zentangle terminology. Basically just fit a kind of circular or round object in there. Looks a bit odd like that, so we can circle it and that means these here could either be more petals they could be seeds or pollen grains in the middle matters not so that's fun isn't it um things i'm thinking of i am going to pick up a finer pen here i've actually got an 05 which should be fine enough is that it would be quite nice to perhaps add an aura line to these as a bit of a little bit of an embellishment, perhaps. Just adds a little something, I'm not sure. But that's me, that's not the original pattern. Okay, so let's have a look at one that's a different shape in the middle. 
and do this again step by step. I'm just going to check here. There we go. Let me move my page so I'm definitely, I'll definitely have enough space on camera for you. So if I go back, I'm now going to do, instead of a pentagon, I'll do a hexagon. So a six sided shape. And these don't have to be drawn perfect. I just have a knack of drawing hexagons because um, my major science is chemistry. My second one is environmental pollution science. And in chemistry, in organic chemistry, you draw an awful lot of hexagons for benzene rings and those kinds of compounds. And so you get used to drawing hexagons pretty well with a circle in the middle. That is um, cyclohexane. I have to put the circle in the middle for it to be benzene. Yeah, I know. All there. And it, they, it, we start in the same way. So let's extend these lines. Make them about the same length. But again, it's not crucial if they're a different length. Like this. Then the next step, and this is where I'm testing myself, is to draw a circle going in the, we start at the point of this line and we draw it this way. Don't go backwards. Although that could be an interesting alternative. Let's have a look at that later on though. Go here, leave a gap. Here, leave a gap. 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 And then we need to pop these little, I'm going to do them all at once because this makes sense to me, as one complete next step. And then we need to draw from a narrow gap at the bottom up to this, to around here, isn't it? So I am going to do it in that kind of way this time and see what that looks like at the end. It could be interesting, it could be a disaster, but until I do it, I don't actually know. So let's have a look. So I'm going to start close, I'm going to go towards this and I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap there for around that dark part. It's always fun to play with variations, that's for sure. Because you never know what little pattern gem you're going to stumble upon. So there we are. That's that step done. So the next one then is to join this over here. So we need to join these lines together. Either way works. You just need to make sure that you've got a nice way. Oh, I missed, did I miss that? I did a bit like that. That is a little bit different, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, so I think this will need to go down. It looks a bit awkward just left like that. But I think that this is the variant I had in mind just a little bit earlier on. So a slightly different way of doing it. But you end up with quite a sweet little variant, I think. Yeah, I've done them all. And so we end up with that. And then in the middle, we could do these again. And we could do, because I've got a bigger shape here, I could actually do layers of them like Crescent Moon. And will I get another one in there if I'm very light-handed. I will just colour that inside bit in. Again, you've got options here. I'm just going to aura them. But if the spaces underneath are big enough, which mine look like they might be in most cases, 
especially if I do my best to make these auras a little bit on the narrow side, except for these tiny ones in the middle. Then I've got the option of putting just a little black sort of semicircle thing at the bottom. I can do it on these as well. And that increased level of darkness makes it feel that we're looking right deep down into a flower that's still in bud form. I do like this variation that I did. I hope I remember how I did it. Yeah, I have I have issues with memory. But it's a good thing because I can always look at this and refer to it. I've got the name. I've got the name written down. So if I really, really forget how to do this, then we're, we're good to go. Now, I did say that... And let me just do... The pentagon again. So I know what the first step is, I've worked that one out. So let me just pop these in like this because on this one we're actually doing these going this way. And so I wonder what would happen if we do it going the opposite way because we may end up with no difference but we may end up with a bit of a difference here. But I really don't know until I try. Like that. And then... Oh, this is going to be quite different. We need those little blobby bits on the end. Because this is where our Petal's going to go. Now, normally it would go down, round and down this way, wouldn't it? Well, you know, the other one. So how can I make this work? Working this puzzle out. Can I do it? I think so. I could go that way or I could go... I don't want to go narrow. I think I may go wide to narrow perhaps. I don't want to go here because that would be joined up but if we go back perhaps that far and see how that works out. So I've got shapes like that and that means then this will have to go here and here and here, and here, and here, and we end up with something that is quite different. Actually, it reminds me more of Fengal than it does anything else, I think. I am just rounding as many corners as I can find here to help. That, act that actually is quite nice, and I think I would it is very similar to Fengal. This way round. I fell in love with Fengal during um, Inktober when we had the um, when I took part in the Tango pattern, um, Tango a day, pattern a day, Tango pattern a day, whatever it was called. I can't remember now for Inktober. And I was looking at variations and Fengal was a tangle pattern I'd always struggled with. But I actually saw somebody draw it. I think it was oh, Zen Linnea. And suddenly the pennies dropped and I kind of fell in love with it. So that actually is, that's a nice variation. What do you think? Yeah, I know. We need to do something in here. So I am going to pop an aura here because it looks a lot like a sea urchin or a a starfish. Pascod Seren. That's what it must be in Welsh. Pascod is fish. Seren is star. So in Welsh you don't say you don't say Seren Pascod because that doesn't make sense in Welsh. It's Pascod Seren. And I could just do perhaps a couple more in the centre like that. And that finishes that one off. I like that as well. I like both actually. 
that's really yeah that works really nicely so that was a different way of working I hope to just have to remember how I did it that's the thing isn't it so, the bunny's is coming back okay so I said I sort of found another uh, a sort of like another variation here of these by drawing these in a slightly different way so I'm going to do the lines going up and back on themselves like this and I'm sure this may be a Zen tangle pattern somewhere but life is too short to fertile through things and then I'm going to just connect them with semicircles. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar, isn't it? Got these shapes formed in a different way. And if we want them to feel that they are overlapping, we can just add some that right that little bit of darkness on that side will just make it feel that it's overlapping a little bit and again in the middle we can do something there I'm going to water the shape and just pop a seed in there for this so slightly different way of drawing fewer steps possibly a bit a little bit less confusing but it certainly works okay other shapes in the middle. I said I did one that was square shaped and let me see if I can do them. This is trying to do this pattern going in the opposite direction. So it's going we go we yeah we circle round in the same direction as we draw the lines leaving a gap. If your lines aren't long enough you just can extend them as you go along. You can always make little adjustments. Then we'll put these little sort of semi-circles I suppose at the end. These little ladybird shapes or ladybugs for you in America. And I don't mean that badly, you just call things differently. And then we can go out like this. So here I'm keeping the line straight for a while and then I'm curving it so I'm changing the shape of this, how this connects. So I don't know if you can see the difference that will make yet but it will and then we'll just connect these just as I've done before or as we've done before. And it does, this flares out a lot, flares out suddenly at the end. This one, the flare is quite gradual, the way it thickens towards the end here. We've got different shaped petals here, almost all. Flux, is it? Like that. And uh, in the middle, it's nice to just we can do the crescent moons or we can do an echo of the square but with them um, curved sides and I think I'll just pop a little bit in the middle there. That's actually quite nice. I like that one. Okay and let's see if we can get a triangle to work. The answer is of course we can. If we can do all of these other shapes we can certainly make a triangle work. So we need to have it going around this way, around this way, and around that way. Oh, we're going to have a crash. I can live with that though. Looking at these, and I'm wondering if having them bigger makes a difference to having them flatter. So let's have a look at making these more pointy, perhaps. Uh, not this one though. Well. Yeah, this one too. So the next step is to have this coming up and round, isn't it? So that way, 
like that. And then I'm going to turn this so we can go. It's that way, isn't it? Yeah. Down like that. And let's join these here. Oh gosh. That's going to go behind. It does make a difference. It makes these stick out far more. Um, I think I would want that though to perhaps slope down a little bit more so it's not quite as abrupt a change. I think that's the key with using bigger ones. It's not just make them bigger in height but in length and you get a different feel quite simply that way. So with this one I'm going to pop this in and we're going to have um, sort of like a triply fragment in the middle, like so. So that works quite nicely. And then on um, Simone's uh, step outs, she says you can you can even use, she does a circle as well at the centre. Circle? Yeah, of course you can. So we can have lines radiating out like this. Don't worry about making them exactly equal because everything will work out in the end. So it's the same thing. Don't want to go backwards, we want to go in the same direction. These are, radi you know, sort of like if we were to carry on this, it would carry this way, so that's what we want to do. We do it the other way, we end up with a fangly one, like that one. Ladybug shapes, just to give us that dark shadow there. And then We echo those and draw down there. Echo and draw down there. I say echo, I mean draw over the line. So I'm going to turn my book around. It's awkward because it's one of my A5s. But we can do it. I just need to do a better angle for um some of these of this one i've these ones have actually gone quite close and kept quite a narrow line there so the these will look different again not just because there is a circular center but because these the shapes of these sections have changed as well just tidy some lines up here. I'm not rounding any lines at the moment. And I think in the circular form, I think I want to just order it and leave it like that. Because you could, if you're into gems, you know, colouring in things in gemstones, that would work quite nicely. I'm going to get a pencil out a moment because as we've done a circle, I'm wondering about perhaps changing the shape and having something that's more oval and perhaps having the centre off-centre, an off-centre centre. Yeah. You know what I mean? So with this, I'm going to take the lines roughly to my pencil lines. It's not important they reach it or they're exactly there. It's just a guide for where we want them to go. So these will curve round with the other one. Well, I've curved them with my others here. I've made the line straight, but here I've curved them and we are going to carry on around the oval shape, the pencil shape a little bit. I'm going to pop the little blips on the end of these 
it's not a lot of space on this one it's quite a short line there but it'll be fine it'll work and then it's a case of going back trying to leave some space there it's going to be awkward because I've made these shapes just that little bit small haven't I I need to extend that one but we we will do it that one's got a bigger gap it's crazy times here it is but it'll be fine because it will all work out and then it's just a question of joining these together Using those lumps and bumps and thicken that I'm going to pop that there and then I'm going to pop um, a seed in the middle like so so that's all quite fun different numbers of arms give you different amounts of space so this one has a lot of space where we could add some other tangle patterns in and for that I am going to use a finer pen or a fine liner pen and I'm going to start with this one I think you may have an idea what I'm going to put here before I even start that's if you're familiar with my my favourite patterns to fill in. I quite I found that I quite like Diva Dance to fill things in. On quite organic shapes, because it is quite an organic pattern in its own right. And it just seems to go well. But I'm not going to fill the whole of this in with Diva Dance. I'm going to just going to do an edge of it because so I think that works really nicely possibly we'll have a look and we'll see I'll put just a double border on there I'm not trying to get to um, a shape there that is even. How does that look? I think that could work quite nicely, actually. It would work, I think, filling the whole thing up. Um, let's, let's just do another section then and see how we get on here and see how it, they look side by side. Coming to these bits, I'm wishing I'm using my brush pen because it's so much easier to fill spaces in. So I hope you're all doing well. hope you're enjoying this particular tangle pattern. I think it's going to be used a fair amount in my work coming up. So there's probably next week's colouring template because that seems to be coming a thing with me is that as I'm doing more and more work with these patterns, they seem to be used in the templates in the week. Not always, but we'll see. These would actually work beautifully in a mandala as well. I haven't done a mandala for a while. So, so I want to get up to about, that's probably around here, so I'll put a little mark there. So I know how far up I want to go with Diva Dance. So that it will kind of match up and follow around. So I must probably want to get it to around here, I would guess. It's such a lovely pattern to use. I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. There's a rhythm or pattern in it that is not perfect. You know, it's not geometrical by any way, shapes and means, but it's got its own life. 
there we go and then so that would that's actually going to work really nicely isn't it i think so shall i just do the last bit you, you you'll be disappointed won't you if i don't so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to work to either dance in the other direction so that I can make sure that these sections just tally up. So those two are blank. So the way of doing it this way is that you fill in the bottom bits of these lines, I suppose. There's one way of doing it. We'll see if I can carry on with that. That's probably not knowing me. But at the end of the day, it doesn't make much difference how you create the diva dance. It won't look any different here than it did to the others, really. So you should try and keep everything a little bit consistent. That's big in there. And that's added a really nice kink in the pattern, hasn't it? This is how you do a diva dance this way. Just remember, you leave gaps and then you fill them in. Like so. It's a bit of a big one there, but it's fine. I think at the end of the day, unless somebody's really inspecting it really closely, they're not going to notice. And then the last one is a plain one as well. So, just pops have some little lumps and, no it's not it's not plain at all we'll add some lumps and bumps there that actually looks that's i like the graphic nature of that one i really do but with others if i have a look at say this one here then we can add lines that radiate out in these into into these middle sections or these these bigger sections so they look a bit more like petals perhaps and I am breaking them with a, a dot to give that feeling of um, reflected light so that we're even thinking about that as we're putting in the line patterns before we even think about adding any color or shadow or shape you know colour or um, highlights. And by curving these lines, it's adding to the movement as well. That swirling nature of this pattern. And that's because I swirled the lines at the beginning. So that really has that, it has a very whooshy kind of feeling to it. Um, with the others, instead of lines that curve out, let me have a look. Because that one, I don't want to mess with that one. Let's go to this one. So instead of lines that curve out, we could put them going around. And that means as well that we could do stripes. So in the next one, I'll do some stripes, chunky lines. Doing a fine line, you're going to have to draw two lines and colour in between. But I haven't left a gap. Now that's what gel pens are for when using thick pens. So you can do things like that. We could also fill it in. These, these shapes would actually work nicely with the tweed and the tweed it's another one of those tangle patterns I could never do, but one day it just clicked. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'll do another section as well. But I started here, I drew a line up there, so along here and just branched it out. So I got a small triangular shape here. Then I did the same on the other side. And you just alternate from side to side. And they'll meet so this line meets the last one i drew this line will meet the one i've just drawn and so on until you fill the space in and you end up with that lovely woven pattern which is rather lovely in its own way um 
And of course we can make use of perhaps um, the shape that's here. I'm on the edge of the page, which means it's awkward drawing time for me. I'll turn it round so I can rest my hand. Yeah. Trying to work out where to put my camera so my hand doesn't get in the way quite so much for you. I try to remember to stop and lift my pen. But like this. And then we can pop in. Actually, I'm going to fill in both of those there. So we get this kind of shape. And if we round that corner, it fits it much nicer. Like so. And I'll do the one next door in the same way. Let's round this at the top before we start and then we can aura this shape like so and perhaps this last one I'll fill in or perhaps up to there so because it try and keep these a consistent size so they look like they belong so that's something a bit different. It looks like we've got something tucked under these arms. And in the, the last one, I'm going to fill this one with pillocks. Like so, so the last one's enormous. I'll just fill that little black bit in, or white bit in at the bottom. So there's some options there for filling these in, which are quite fun. Others, I just love the elegance of this and I don't think I'd want to do anything. Perhaps I'd just put a row of dots up against each one of these, just to add a little bit of interest. These are perfect for adding colour to. This one, I'm not quite sure. I can't. I'm struggling to think here if there's anything else that I could do that I haven't already done. Most probably. My head is going through, what else could I pop there? Let's see if this will fit in. So I'm adding Uh, I'm trying to keep to three for each, but we're getting fours. I'll just go back and add some little bits at the bottom, like so. That looks a bit frilly and lacy, but it adds some interest. And um, shadow under there will have them really popping underneath if you want to um, if you do the add shadow to the side that is towards the center facing the center so we're using shadow as a pattern then or thickness of line as a pattern it's not how i would do it if i was adding shadow from a light source but in zentangle you don't have to have a light source so that's quite fun and it adds sh an opportunity for shadow um, going that way. This one I like as is, um, I do, I, it's Fengal with a difference. So we've got, we've got to these places, okie dokes, let me pop my pens and my pencil away and just move those out of the way and I shall bring in some Pencil, um, ink, some ink tense pencils and my brush. I've got here Madder Brown. Yeah, I it's it's fine. So I'm going to pop 
this underneath here and my brush is too dry to work with this so just squeeze a bit of water hopefully and then while this is still wet I should be able to spread it out so we've got a lot of shadow underneath these sections so you just give my brush a little squeeze just to activate some water and do the same on each of these here yeah, it's not doing anything it'll be fine it's damp enough it's finding that balance between just damp enough but not sopping wet or not too dry it's too much water is um it's not easy to handle and this paper doesn't take it too well it's the um sketch it's the paper in the sketchbook that is for sketching and design you know draft rather than anything else but just a hint of color just changes these shapes so much doesn't it starts to bring things to life and brings dimension already and it just makes this star shape in the middle just stand out that little bit more I just have that and see how roughly that colour's gone on, how the the paper has reacted with it. Now I I'm going to use the same colour in the centre central bits here because I want to add some shadow there as if they are coming out from behind this central. Um, shape, the pentagon in the middle. Let's see how this works, perhaps a bit more colour. Pick a tiny bit of colour and you can really wash it out so it's 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 as the name says intense, in, more intense there. Picked up a lot of colour there compared to the others, but it'll be fine. And then you can see how it will fade out just with that damp brush. One last one to do. And go back and forth here I'm just going like that so that works quite nicely and I will just add a little washer colour in here to this one I'll leave everything as it, everything else as it is I'm not going to add shadows here I'll leave them as they are because there is the um, shadows for all these sections here really are lifting these up. If the colour's not intense enough you can always go back and add a bit more as I'm doing here because they look a bit insipid in comparison to the others. The first ones I did, that's a little bit better. This one could do with just a little bit more. Hard to judge how much but in the grand schemes of things it'll work out just perfectly fine and well so that automatically gives that difference um, with the diva dance I'm actually going to put shadow along these these edges to lift these arms up and there will be some colour coming down into the diva dance but not much but I will want to add some along the outer edge. Like so. So you can see that helps to lift these up just that little bit. It's so hard for me because I want to leave them as they are in case I mess up with colour. But then it's also um, a sketchbook and these are my first looks at this particular tangle pattern and um, there's plenty of variations aren't there just working on variations that seems to be my thing often so if i mess up with color it's it's no big thing really is it it's in the sketchbook, so it's not going to matter too much. 
What does matter is that I need to get a grip with this brush. As in, get to grips with it. Oh, look at that. Way darker colour there in that section, but that's okay. I'll do the same in the others. Just pick up more of this ink and perhaps a bit more again. And we'll just splurge it on and get a really dark edge here as well. So that works nicely. The paper's pilling. That's my only issue now. Okay, inside I am going to add some of this over those sections just to tone them down a bit and leave that there. And then I'm going to leave these as they are because they'll stand out over that. That's really intense. And most probably the problem is I haven't put the light on. <laughs> so the video is going to be a bit on the darker side. And there's no sun today. Well, there is. It's just behind clouds and rain. So it's really nice. Um, but I think you get the idea of what we can do here. Um, let me have a look at this one because I, perhaps I will add shadow to these sections. Just a little bit. And see how just a little bit of ink tense goes a long, long way. They're not, they're not called ink tense for no reason. That didn't make sense. That was two negatives. They're called ink tense for a reason. It's because the colours really are intense. So that's a different feel there. But you, I think you get the ideas and there's so many ways of adding shadow and colour that I could be here for the rest of the day, which I'm not going to because the video is nearly an hour long already. And so, you know, it's, it's time for me to kind of wrap this up, I suppose. And um, just to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've had a lovely time here and that you've enjoyed having a look at, um, what do you call it, Cyros with me, and that I'll see you again uh, in my next video, which will most probably be tomorrow, and it'll most probably be something like a bookmark or a design that you can use on the top of the card, perhaps. We'll see what happens. Um, it may be a slightly bigger drawing that you could frame in a small frame. I'm going to have to look up picture frame sizes to make sure we get that one right. But that could be fun to do. What do you think? If you've got any, if you've got any particular ideas or things you'd like, leave a comment in the box below. But if you've enjoyed this, please consider liking the video. If you've subscribed, once again, thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, Think about that if you want to have notifications of when I upload videos or and you know notifications of comments in the not comment section was it the community section as well and you'd be most welcome um, the other thing is let me know which ones which one of these you like the most um, I definitely am a fan of this one but I think this one wins my heart but this one's really cute. I really like that one. And, and this one's interesting, even though it's got lots of different patterns in it, because I like those. It's hard, isn't it? But I think this one is the surprising one, the one where I, I did the curves backwards, as it were, in the opposite direction. I should have known I'd have got a fengal. But there we are. Until you try it, you don't know. So until I see you again, take care of yourselves. Look after yourselves. And above all else, find time to be creative. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.